difficult to, which is why we're here, but it's very difficult to tell VR, which is why I think it's so important that, as Victoria says, the first experiences are a good one, because they can be scarring if they're not. And honestly, somebody's going to die from a zombie attack this year. Yes, I want somebody like to hazard a guess, some brave soul. When was the first VR room put together? Um, Anybody know some academic history? Any guesses? Maybe so. Okay, that's not bad. That's, I'm going to go a little bit. Okay, close, close. There's a seven in it. I'm going with 17,000 years ago. <laughs> when, uh, if you know this one, this is the case of La Salle in the southwest of France. And when you think about it, one of your ancestors crawled on their hands and knees in this tiny narrow passageway, just lit by the guttering light from an animal fat candle with a pouch full of earth pigments, and they spent decades working on this together, men and women, painting all these amazing, beautiful animals. And this is a snapshot of a scene in the middle of the Ice Age, in the Upper Paleolithic. This was Stone Age. People didn't have metal, they certainly didn't have plastic or glass. Um, this predates nearly all of our technology, except for pointy rocks and the odd sharpened stick. And yes, we still had this instinct to kind of collect, preserve, and share this immersive, immersive experience. I'm just fascinated that we're just carrying on that kind of uh, 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 history. And I wanted to do this face. <laughs> Apparently you're going to be tripping your nuts off on LSD as soon as you put a helmet on. But uh, I will tell you one other thing. If you, if you need to get to this place, and I think we all secretly do, even if we're a bit embarrassed about saying it, whatever your equipment budget is, whatever you're planning of spending, on your room, you want to take 10% of that and invest in some really good quality tooth whitening because you can embarrass yourself if you don't. And you know what? They were right. It was underwater. So by 2019, all of the scuba diving stuff, all the shops will close down because we can just do it in the comfort of our own home. And that's a beautiful term, and it's amazing that that is verges on photographic, but this just runs on you know, a game ready VR machine. So, how do we give people that really nice experience to get to the face? Well, it helps if you have a loft apartment, obviously. You want to sparsely furnish it with some designer furniture, hardwood floor, ideally, exposed brickwork, a bit of whitewash, and uh, no cats or dogs or kids to trip over. Um, yeah, that, that's, that's my dream setup. But this is what I'm working with. Let's get a little bit closer to my uh, home office. for speaking real expectations at this point. I, I was researching some of this imagery. I was typing hoarders and messes. Um, I, actually, I checked with the organizers on this because it was an image that I actually felt, um, I'm not normally shy about this kind of thing, but I was nervous about putting this next picture in the slide. But uh, they said it would be OK. If you're nervous, close your eyes. The person next to you will tap you. When I go to the next slide, I'll make it quick. And you're all sitting down, which is good. All right. I, oh, I hate this one. It's Steve Jobs. Can you believe it? I feel better about my office now. This guy, what a hoarder. Look at all that. There's no alphabetizing of that bookshelf. But uh, I'm delighted that he's as messy as I am. So what are we really looking at? Probably something like this. And this was my first experience. And it was nice, and it was fun, and it was with friends. But you're not going to get 100 people through that in an afternoon, not without somebody pushing a controller through your television set. So what would you like to build? Well, if space is no object, and why would it be, then yeah, go for a holodeck. Go for one of these cave systems, these beautifully projected images. Half a million dollars worth of television sets, fine. We didn't have that kind of space. But maybe you have a smaller room, you have a, an armature, some of those magic socks that let you slip around one of these concave surfaces. Uh, that's fine if you get tired of tripping over the stacks of cash that line the walls between you and your bathroom at night. Uh, this is the reality of what we were dealing with. Uh, for a lot of people, it probably is their first experience. And I don't want to enter that magical, mythical realm I've been dreaming about for 20 years in something that looks closer to a hospital waiting room. Uh, it's brightly lit, it's hard walls, the audio is bad, people are tripping over your cable and they're just chatting in the background and it just, ugh, it's just, it's not nice. Well, I would say, this guy here, now famous, this is uh, Dominic Kayser, ETH, Swiss guy. He made, it, he made uh, Google Earth VR, so you can all be sending some nice fan mail on uh, uh, his Google Plus account. 
Uh, okay, so the room. What were we going to do with the room? Well, I'm a big fan of SketchUp, so I kind of really need to picture something first. And uh, I just looked around the office, figured out what uh, furniture I could steal without anybody noticing, and then just put it in my little model. And I showed this for the facilities, and they said, okay, that's fine, but we'll give you a bit of budget, push the boat out a little bit, which I did. Uh, and then they said, well, health and safety, there's a pillar there, there's a fire risk, people are going to get out of the room. Uh, okay, well, let me tweak that a little bit. And so this is closer to what it looks like. There's an Easter egg, any game players here will maybe kind of pick up on that. But this is more or less uh, what we put together, and you can see it being built in progress here. So it's one of these equilibrium rectangular things. I know you feel a bit drunk when you look at it, but trust me, it's a nice 360 that makes sense when you see it in a VR headset. But uh, the partitions are in. I never liked that orange carpet, thank God we got rid of it. Um, the paneling was starting to go up, but we had a working room until then. But you've got to be careful of glass because the lasers will bounce off of it. And if you did actually go to a corner here, uh, you'd just suddenly teleport out and you'd feel dizzy and a little bit drunk. And so uh, some good old fashioned wallpaper in, in that corner uh, solved that problem. Uh, we're getting closer, we had some old style lights which kind of went away. Uh, but you see this division between an operator area and there's a complete distinction from the, the play area, if you like. And then this is it. Now, it looks a little bit like one of these uh, mental asylum things or some cheesy B movie. But honestly, I've seen some people do some silly things in the VR room, and having padded walls is quite a good idea. <laughs> it's also the most expensive thing. But if, if they scream and a shark starts chasing them, then it doesn't offend your colleagues so much when you're in this kind of enclosed space. Uh, so what do we build? Well, this thing you probably know if you've ever built your own machine. This is the GPU du jour, which is a GTX 1080. Uh, it's kind of big, it's expensive, but it's the first GPU that's built from VR from the ground up, and it, it's worth the investment. You can be future-proof for a few years with this thing. That's, that's a story we always tell ourselves. Um, it's pretty much standard gaming stuff. This is all just, it's about a $2,200 order from Digitech. Uh, we did build it ourselves. Um, I don't know if you can see this thing here when they delivered it. I thought somebody dropped a motorbike part in our box. This thing required two of us to lift out the box and install, but that's just the cooling for the CPU. It's a little bit crazy. But uh, basically, build yourself a nice games machine. Uh, we used an SSD, a solid state drive, just so everything booted up a little bit quicker, it can minimize the startup time. And uh, iterated on the room because I made a lot of mistakes. I put things in the wrong position. Uh, little things like people were tripping over headsets when not in use. So we just put some things in, like these little uh, pegs for hanging the controllers when you're recharging and stuff like that. Uh, this was nice. I kind of skipped this out for a carpenter, and he went, no problem, and it keeps that off the floor. Small bit of plastic, step on that. Probably cost 20 bucks to replace, but it's going to kill your system if you do break it. So there's the downtime issues as well. And then you get to get graded. So this was a 15 francs worth of uh, Migros' finest lumber. And uh, that's my additional cooling unit, just to kind of lift the box off the carpet. And the cooling is quite important for the box because you need a good airflow in from the back and the bottom, let it kind of rise naturally up the top. Because these things can get quite warm, particularly in an enclosed room. I'll be honest, it's not a fun room to be in the summer, but anything you can do to mitigate against that will go down well. Um, now this one can be surprisingly uh, controversial. I, I stick to this. I basically wanted a nice soft carpet because I want people to roll around on a beautiful moss-covered forest floor uh, whenever they enter gnomes and goblins. And so I make a big deal about this, and the sales team aren't impressed because we get all these CEOs in time to time from our AdWords clients. Uh, but I knew it was the right decision when I saw one of the D Digitech marketing, beautifully business-suited women just lying on her back making moss angels and gnomes <laughs> and goblins. It's like, perfect, that's what we're going for here. Uh, and plus the soft walls, just this nice kind of warm, comfy, dare I say, room-like experience is great because you can turn this awful chaperone grid down because nothing shatters. Well, walking into a wall perhaps shatters the immersion, but this is the next worst thing where you just have this constant pop-up for the five chaperone grid. Um, lighting? Well, this would be nice. There's all these very smoke control lights, and we did something a bit like that. That man doesn't like pink lights. Sorry, sorry, I'll, it changes to green. We're just going to remote control. 
have a good evening. Uh, but we do, this is a remote control, and we can do all sorts of fun things like, uh, well, I keep coming back to gnomes and goblins, nice little green setting. Somebody can come into the room, you can hear the sound of the owl at night, and just something scuffling around in the foliage. Uh, trials of tattooing, now for these programs, the little buttons. Um, and I, the one thing I'd actually say, I, it's not so clear from this, everything in the room is actually black and white, or grey. The splash of colour is what you get when you put the headset on, and so it feels like you're kind of entering a magical portal. And so I love this idea that people come in, they hear sound as they come in, the light's already there, so by the time they put the headset on, they're already in that mental space. And so it's, it's the theatre starts as soon as they come in the door, ideally. Uh, audio is a big part of it. Um, the VR that we have has this incredible binaural spatial audio, the walk around, pinpoint accuracy, uh, summer. Again, it's just, it gets, nobody wants to put sweaty headphones on. So we either ask people to bring their own, or to be honest, the simplest thing, actually, let me backtrack. If you do need to shout instructions, it's horrible when you're bellowing over the sound of closed ear headphones, which does give you the best experience, but it's kind of fiddly. You can set up an external mic. There is, I virtually and really lost the will to live after going through all the Reddit threads about how to get the damn microphone to speak to the headphones on the Vive headset. Not pleasant. Here's a solution. Just get some decent power tabletop speakers. You don't get the same positional audio, but it, it just, it's a lot more comfortable. And it certainly helps with the throughput of the room if you need to get a lot of people through there. And hurt. Uh, hygiene. If there's one thing you learn from this, and I, I, feel like, I feel like I'm stealing your innocence just by telling you this, but two words for you. Ocular herpes. It's a thing, apparently, so you definitely don't want to catch that. Uh, think of all the stuff you can get on a set of these. Um, VR condoms, which is nice. There's a little Thai company called VRcovers.com. And uh, you can buy these lovely white clean things and make sure you invest in a big packet of baby wipes because you'll be getting through these uh, very quickly. So remember, always practice safe VR. No <laughs> so what is the philosophy? Uh, it's, I don't want it to be a business environment. I don't want it to be very formal. Uh, this is what I'm going for. You're, you're a kindergarten teacher. You're just introducing somebody to a new maybe slightly threatening, but potentially very lovely learning place, and you're letting them have some unguided fun, ideally. So, uh, you know, go, go and see where toddlers play. You want to create something that's just soft and friendly, like this. And uh, just little things. Don't, don't make it overly complicated. Don't give them, you know, two controllers and 12 buttons on each one for their very first experience. Um, let them enjoy the space. Don't have other people there that you're having a conversation with. This really should be about the person taking the demo. Um, let them discover it for themselves. Adults discover from play just like kids do. We, we don't change in that regard. Um, I actually lock the door when people are in there because we have quite a bit of passing traffic and nothing makes you feel more uncomfortable than somebody coming in and looking at you when you're having this very intimate moment and just, ugh, it feels ugh, yucky. Uh, and then, yeah, just it's, it's all about them, basically. So the demos, what I like to run people through, usually in this order, uh, the blue is terrific. It's beautiful, it's impactful, you don't need a controller, and it's over in two minutes, so you can't complain when you tear the headset off their heads at the end of it. So if you need to get a bunch of people through very quickly, just do Whale Encounter from that. Uh, it really is just such a, a stunning demo. And everybody ducks when the whale tail comes down every time. Always makes me laugh. Yeah. Um, this is lovely. It's unthreatening. Kids like this one. Nobles and Goblins I keep talking about because it's one of my favorites. John Favreau, uh, director of the Iron Man movies and Jungle Book. Uh, so he knows how to tell a story without text, uh, just from context. Uh, it's, it's utterly charming and it's free. The preview is free. Um, I think we've probably all tried the lightsaber thing. It's, it's something very nice about seeing the grin that crosses grown men's faces when they realise that uh, they can pull that thing out of Ardu Didu's head and start waving it around like the five-year-old they secretly still are. Uh, and this actually was my first one. I, I, I'm fascinated by photogrammetry just now, so Vesper Peak was a favourite for me. Um, robot repair is probably the high point in production values. I just spent 10 minutes walking around looking at the bookshelves and the machinery and through the windows. Uh, the, the level of detail that goes through, I mean, it's flawless, and things like the cameras following you around the room, um, it's breathtaking for me. I, that feels like the most real 
for your place I'd visit. I'd love that thing and go back and visit routinely. Uh, if you want to have something a little more grown up, Everest is great. I think it's about 20 bucks just now and I guess you could call it almost, it's sort of half a movie, half a documentary, uh, really nicely made uh, and it's the closest we're going to get to climbing Everest, I'm sure. So, you know, 20 bucks, not bad. And then of course my new personal favourite, and if you haven't tried this, this is now available on Oculus as well as Vive. This was just launched a couple of days ago, as well as a new web version. But do try Google Earth. When you imagine this, that you, you, to have this globe in your hand and you can point at it with your left hand and know that you can go to anywhere on the face of the planet. Just imagine the impact on somebody like Columbus or Vasco da Gama or Miguel and any of these people. Just incredible to think about how technology has come. And this was the home that Earth has been waiting for. When you put the headset on for the first time, you realize this is what it's always all been about. So stunning. Uh, so there we go. This is, uh, this is a lovely thing you can give to somebody. You can gift them this experience. Um, I make a point of taking a picture. You get a very happy face when you come out. And so that's something you can post on Facebook. Uh, Google Plus. Google Plus. <laughs> I'm going to read this one, it's my, it's my only really written slide, but uh, you have the opportunity to give somebody a profound, moving and life-changing experience, and I hope you do.